So how do I pick my strike and how do I pick my expiry when I sell options? Well, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you there's no perfect answer. You really have to go with what you're comfortable with. But what is recommended is to go the one standard deviation, which is at about expected move. So when you sell options, you tend to look at probabilities, probability of winning. So the more out of the money you are, the better chance you have of winning. But the more out of the money strike you pick, the less premiums you collect. And at some point when your strike, although rare, but if your strike gets breached, you might not have collected enough to compensate for that one time you lose. So you have to sort of find the perfect balance because you don't want to win small amounts when you're right most of the time. But then that one time where you're wrong, you, you lose a lot. So I'll just share what I like to do or what I like to use. So I like to go at expected move and expected move. I'll calculate it by looking at the at the money straddle. So let's say the stock right now is trading Chewy, for example, trading at 82.71. So the market is closed right now. So I'm just going to look at the last prices. It's not necessarily it's not entirely accurate, but for example purposes, it's good enough. So I'll look at the straddle value, let's say April April 16 and so I'll look up the straddle to see what the value is now because the market is closed I don't see anything so I'm just going to look at calls and puts so basically the straddle is the value of the call and the put at the money so at the money the stock's at 82.7 so the closest strike at the money is 82.5 so I'll add the put which is 3.65 I'll add the call which is 3.77 so the expected move is about seven dollars doesn't have to be perfect so I'm going to try to go $7. If I sell a put, which I usually do, I'm going to go $7 below the current market price. So 82.7 minus 7 is about 75. So the strike that I would choose if I am choosing the, six expi the April 16 expiry, I would choose a 75 strike. So if we add more strikes over here just to see what the 75 was trading at, so you would see that 75 last traded for a dollar seven so if i wanted to sell a naked put on chewy for example at a 75 at a 75 strike which is the expected move i collect a dollar in with two weeks remaining and you can see that the 75 strike represents about an 18 delta so about an 80 percent chance of winning but it's not necessarily it's not i don't necessarily follow it to the letter sometimes i'll i might come closer if i don't like the premium that i'm collecting if I feel confident about the stock, if I'm a little bit bullish on the stock, I might come closer and do maybe like the 77 or maybe do the $80 strike so I can collect more premium. It also depends if I'm doing a naked put or if I'm doing a put spread. If I'm doing a naked put, I might come closer knowing that if I'm breached, I can roll the put so I'm not too concerned if I get breached. So I might come closer to collect more premium. But if I'm doing a put spread, I'm definitely doing at least at expected move. So put spread for sure will be at expected move. And I will only do a put spread if I can collect at least a dollar. If I if I'm if I am at expected move doing a five point wide spread. So for example, let's look at a bigger stock here. Let's look at Netflix and let's look at the April or let's look at the May 21st expiry. So the stock is at 540. So I'll look at the value of the put and the call at 540. So we've got $30 here and $30 here. So it's $60. So the expected move for May 21st is 60 points. So if I want to do a put spread on Netflix, I would do 540 or 539, whatever, 540 minus 60. So my short strike for the put spread would be at 480. So then if I do a put spread at 480, mm -hmm. I would make sure that I'm collecting at least a uh, dollar. So let's say 480 to 475. So this is a five point wide put spread. I would make sure that I'm collecting at least a dollar from this five point wide put spread. And you can see that the last traded price, 880 minus 785 is 95 cents. So this is an exact. This is an example of a put spread that I would do because I could collect a dollar from from this put spread at expected move strike. So that's for the strike. So I would pick for put spreads. I would pick at least the expected move for naked puts. It really depends. I start off by looking at the expected move. Sometimes I'll come closer if I want more premium. If it's a if it's a cheaper stock that's priced maybe under forty dollars, I could probably come closer knowing that. 
I have no problem rolling it if I'm breached. But if let's say I want to sell a naked put on Tesla, for example, for earnings or on Zoom for earnings, I'm definitely going to go even lower. I'm going to go far away, further than expected move. Uh, so it might be a five delta, for example, because I just want to win on the trade. I cannot necessarily afford to roll the put if I get breached. And the stock is so expensive that even the far away, even the far away strikes pay a good enough premium for me. So I can maybe collect two dollars, but I'm at a five delta or even lower. So two dollars, that's two hundred dollars on a very, very safe trade with a one week expiry. So it really depends on the situation. But I, I try to pick the strike that I'm comfortable um, I don't like stress. I don't like worrying. So I'd probably pick the safest strike, but also keeping in mind that I have to collect a decent amount of premium. And I always start off with one contract just in case the trade goes bad. Now the expiry. So I used to like doing weeklies shorter term because I find that the, the decay is so much faster, of course. And sometimes the, when, when implied volatility was high, the one week expected move was almost as good as the two or three week expected move. Now that implied volatility is low, I like to do maybe 30 days or 60 days, maximum 60 days, but I'll take the monthly expiries because the monthly expirations, they have more liquidity, more volume. So it's easier to get filled and the difference between the bid and ask isn't super wide. So if there's no earnings, I'm going to take the monthly expiries. If there is earnings, I'm going to take the earning expiry. So for example, Netflix has an April 20th earnings, as you could see over here. So if I wanted to play earnings on Netflix, I would take the April 23rd expiry. I wouldn't necessarily go to May 21st. I would go to the closest expiry after earnings because the difference between the April 23rd and the April 30th is going to be very little in premium. So it's not worth adding more time risk. So I might as well just take the April 23rd, the closest thing to earnings. Uh, that's if I want to play earnings. And then uh, once earnings is announced, the volatility in the premiums in the stock or in the options drops a lot. So generally speaking, I like to go to the monthlies because of liquidity in the options. But if there's earnings, I will go to the weekly expiries to get the best time decay or premium per time ratio, if you if we can say that. So I'll give you an example here. We're looking at the calls and puts for Netflix. So we're looking at April. Let's look at April 9th. So look at, at the 540, the at the money strike. The put is $8.80 for one week to go. So you think if I look at the April 16, I would get $16. So April 16, I only get $12. So one extra week gives me only an extra $4. All right, so we're gonna go to April 23rd. Now remember, April 23rd has the earnings. So you're gonna see a big jump. So if we continue with the same pace, we, we, saw, we saw $8 for the first week, for one week. We saw an extra $4 for a second week. Now, should we expect an extra $4? So maybe we should get $16 but I'll bet you it's going to be above $20. So you can see the 540 strike is $23. So because it has earnings, volatility is higher. So it's a much better uh, premium to time ratio, if, if we can say that. So 23 divided by three weeks, because this expiry is three weeks away. So 7.6 per week. And while if we look at the April 16, it's 12 divided by two. So it's $6. And if we look at the April 9th, it says $8.80. And if we go to the April 30th, it's not that much more. It's only $2 more than the previous expiry than the previous week. It's only $2 more than the, than the April 23rd. So I've been getting seven to $8 per week of premium. And now going one more extra week, I only get $2. So that's what I mean by, I might change the expiry that I choose based on when earnings is announced. But I, as you can see, this might not be completely accurate because these are showing the last prices. It's not real time prices. So the monthlies are always the third Thursday of the month. So you can see April 16 was a monthly. May 21st is a monthly. So we look at a calendar. One, two, three. I said Thursday, but I meant Friday. It's always the third Friday of the month. So one, this is the first Friday, second Friday, third Friday. April 16 is the monthly expiry. If you go to May We've got the first Friday is the 7th, and then the second Friday is 14. The third Friday is 21st. 
So that's why May 21st is the monthly expiry. So the monthly expires have better liquidity, better volume. The weeklies are still good, depending on the underlying, of course. But and actually, some stocks don't even have weeklies. Most stocks have monthlies only. As you can see, skills here only has monthly expiries. So if we go back to Netflix just for fun, and let's say I want to play earnings on Netflix, April 23rd. So I wanted to play the put side. So let's say I want to do a naked put. So I have a few choices. If I do the expected move, we saw April 23rd expected move. If I put back the calls, so the expected move on Netflix, April 23rd, how come the puts disappeared? Okay, short lag. All right, so April 23rd, we're gonna see the strato value. So basically 23 or let's say 40. So 23 plus 24, so about $50. So you can see the expected move for Netflix earnings is $50 on April 23rd. 23rd expiry notice that may 21st we said it was 60 points so it's only 10 points extra and we're going like an extra month away so that's that's the advantage of earnings is the volatility is so much higher so yeah so the april 23rd expiry has an expected move of about 50 points for netflix so if i want to go 50 points lower for earnings so 540 minus 50 that would give me a 490 strike let's see how much i can collect I could collect about, so yeah, this is definitely not accurate because you could see the prices are not even consistent. So nine, eight, eight, seven, and then this goes back up, eight, six. So yeah, so, so it's really not accurate. But right now it's showing the 490 can give me about $6.40. So that's $640. But if, if I want to play it even safer, that's, so that's the expected move strike. But I could play it safer and I don't know, I could go to 445 collect two dollars to 225 dollars so if i'm happy making 225 dollar on an earnings trade knowing that i'm super safe like 40 plus 50 90 points away on netflix then i could do that there's nothing that says i have to take the uh, 80 the 20 delta or the 80 percent probability out of the money just strike so it's really up to me up to my goals as well and understanding as well as long as you understand what you're doing you could you could pick the strikes that you want as long as you understand the consequence as well of what you're doing the risks of what you're doing so because this is an earnings trade and i know that anything can happen after earnings it could be really crazy the movement can be very hard so it doesn't hurt to go a little bit safer a little bit further just to be safe and especially if the premiums allow especially if the premiums allow you to go even further and if you're happy with a $200 profit, so why not, knowing that you're almost 100 points away from the current market price. So th that would be something that I would do. So another way I would choose my expiry is depending on how low I want my strike to be. So I prefer shorter term because it decays faster, but sometimes if you take a shorter term expiry, you're not able to go low enough on the strike. So sometimes if I want my strike, my starting strike to be very low, I'll go to the 60-day expiry so i'll go to the to the may 21st expiry in this case because it's the next monthly expiry if i go to june it's too far it's it's 76 days away i wouldn't go over 60 days on uh, when i if i'm selling options so the closest thing to 60 the closest thing to 60 days would be may 21st and anyways the decay is almost as fast as the weekly but at least if anything bad happens my starting point is super far so for example I did a naked put on Spotify when it was trading at around 250. I went to for the May 21st expiry. I sold the 210 put, so I went really far making the trade super safe, and I sold it for five dollars. Right now, the 210 put it closed on Friday, so that same week it closed for a dollar 95. So I would have made three dollars of profit. So that's 300 dollars. And that's in the same week, and that's with Spotify trading at around 250 and going back up in three days. I ended up closing the trade earlier, so I sold for five, I bought it back for four, making a one dollar profit. But what I'm trying to say is that you're still getting the same decay as if you're playing the weekly. If I were playing the weekly, it would decay much faster, but I would have to be closer. So if I played a shorter expiry, I wouldn't be able to go to 210 strike, I would have to come much, much closer. I'd be, as you could see. I'd be at a 260 strike or even at a 250 strike. But playing the 60 day expiry allows me to go much further on the strike and I can still close my trade before expiry or as fast as one week and collect the same dollar profit I would have made on a weekly expiry. So that's how I choose my strike and that's how I choose my expiry. So if you have any questions, leave in the comment section below. 
Like always, if you can open an account with Questrade to trade on the stock market, use my referral link below to get $50 in free trades. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button, share with a friend, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.